Hi, this is a lecture on gravitational fields and gravitational field strength. It assumes you already know Newton's law of universal gravitation and Newton's laws of motion. So let's get started. Uh, so gravity is this action at a distance force that causes masses to attract each other. Uh, and it's a field force, which means it transmits its force not through contact, but through this gravitational field. Um, so our, a gravitational field is this this thing that is invisible and it permeates all space. Um, and it shows you the direction and strength of the gravitational force on an object, that an object would be. It's produced by masses, and it points in the direction that the gravitational force would point for an object that we place in that gravitational field. So if I place an object right here, it's going to feel a force towards the Earth. Um, and the strength of the field determines the strength of the force. Um, gravitational field lines or gravitational field line diagrams are a useful way to show the gravitational uh, show the gravitational field around an object or around a distribution of mass that produces it. Um, and they're going to show us both the approximate magnitude and direction of the gravitational field. The way that these field line diagrams work is um, field lines point in the direction of the force. They never actually, uh, uh, they're, they're lines, and they're lines that end at the mass producing the field. So we can see this on the Earth over here in the top right. We have all these lines coming in pointing towards the Earth. That's because the gravitational field around the Earth points directly towards the center of the Earth. And field lines don't. Uh, they can only actually end on the mass that's producing the field. They also never cross. So the direction that the field points tells us the direction of the force. And the strength of the field is represented by how close the lines are together. We can see in this field line diagram of the Earth that as we get closer and closer to the Earth, the field lines are a little bit closer together. If we're far away, the field lines are quite far apart. And that shows us that the gravitational field gets weaker as we get farther away from the Earth. It gets stronger as we're closer because the lines are closer together. The density of the field lines in a diagram shows us the um, shows us something proportional to the strength. Um, let's let's zoom into the Earth a little bit. Actually, before we zoom in, let's let's talk about this field. The field, gravitational field around the Earth is not uniform. It is not a constant gravitational field. We can see as we go around the Earth at a constant distance, the field changes direction. So the direction is not constant. And as we go further out, the field gets weaker. So neither the magnitude or direction are uniform as we move around in space around the Earth. And if we zoom into Earth down here in figure 2b, we can see that the field is still not um, not uniform. It's more uniform, though, because the direction is closer together and the magnitude is also more uniform. As we get farther apart, the magnitude doesn't change as much. The lines are about the same distance everywhere we go, but it's still not uniform. However, if we zoom in really, really close to one part of the Earth, because we can no longer see the curvature of the Earth, all the field lines are essentially pointing down and they're essentially all exactly parallel to each other, as in figure 2c. And from our point of view on the Earth, this field actually looks perfectly uniform. All the lines are equally spaced, and they all point in exactly the same direction. Which means that wherever we are in this field, you're going to get the same gravitational field strength. Which is why all objects fall, or at least, yeah, why all objects fall at the same rate near the surface of a planet. But as we get really far away, they don't fall at the same rate. Because our field looks uniform, when we zoom in really close. Let's actually define our gravitational field, though. Um, and we use the variable lowercase g for gravitational field. It, it is a vector. And it's defined as gravitational force per unit mass for a small test mass, which we usually call little m, in a gravitational field. So our equation is little g is the force of gravity over little m. And so what we're really doing is we, we have some gravitational field. I'm going to represent it like this. We place a mass, little m, in this field. We measure the force on it. And our g field then 
we just take that force and divide out by the mass. So since we have force over mass, our units are going to be newtons per kilogram. But because a newton is a uh, kilogram meter per second squared, then a newton per kilogram is just a meter per second squared. So our units for our G field are either newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. They're the same as the units for acceleration. The nice thing about, uh, the, the important thing about G-field is it does not depend on the object feeling the force. Because if we place an object with twice as much mass in here, it has a mass of 2m, well, it's going to feel twice as much force, 2f. So when we solve for the G-field, it's going to be 2f over 2m. It's going to give us the same force, the same g-field as over here. So g-field is independent of the object feeling the force. It tells us about the force around an object, but it doesn't actually tell us the force. Okay, find the gravitational field strength on the surface of the moon, where a 63.0 kilogram object weighs 102 newtons. Okay, so we have a force of 102 newtons. And our mass is 63.0 kilograms, and we're in some G field. I'm going to just draw it over here, label it G. And we use G equals F over M. It's going to be 60, it's going to be 102 newtons over 63.0 kilograms. We get our G field strength of G equals 1.62. The units are going to be newtons per kilogram. Easy to calculate. Force per unit mass on a test mass. That's also the gravitational acceleration on the moon, 1.62 meters per second squared. So we can also talk about the gravitational field produced by a mass instead of felt by a mass um, because we know about the gravitational force between two masses. So let's start with Newton's law of universal gravitation for two objects. The force is big G, big M, little m over R squared. And we know that, well, let's say, let's say that big M is producing the field. And so we want to find the field strength. We want to find this field strength at the location of little m. So we find, want to find the G value here. So little m is feeling the force. Field strength is force per unit mass, so we can just plug in our, or substitute in our force in here. We get g m little m over r squared divided by little m. Mass is canceled, and we get a new expression for gravitational field produced by a mass big M. It's g m, that's big M over r squared. So the gravitational field produced by a mass big M at some distance r away is given by this equation. It's still an inverse square law, just like Newton's law of universal gravitation. Let's find the gravitational field strength at the surface of the Earth, given the mass of the Earth and the average radius of the Earth. So here's my earth, here's my radius, and we want to find the field strength here. So that's right at the surface. Little g is big G, big M over R squared, where big M is what's producing the field. Big G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters squared per kilogram squared. I'm going to emit units. Big M is 5.972 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the radius of the Earth is 6378 kilometers, or 6378 times 10 to the 3 meters. You've got to put it in meters for our units to cancel. Square that R and plug into a calculator. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times 5.972, times 10 to the 24, divided by the whole quantity 6378 times 10 to the 3, that whole quantity squared, I get 9.79 newtons per kilogram. 
if we write this in meters per second squared from this calculation, we would get 9.79 meters per second squared. Uh, that's our gravitational field strength at the surface of the Earth. It should be quite close to 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, and this is, keep in mind, just a back of the envelope calculation. We didn't actually measure it. We assume a perfectly spherically symmetric Earth, but it's not exactly spherically symmetric. So our value is a little bit off, but it's still quite, quite close. Okay, so you may notice that 9.79 meters per second squared, that's, that's the same as gravitational acceleration on Earth. That's because field strength, gravitational field strength, is the same as gravitational acceleration. They are the same value. They don't just have the same units. Stronger field does mean a greater force, which means more acceleration. But it's weird with gravity that they are exactly the same. It's not just that they're proportional to another. Most forces do not act that way. So field, G field strength is equal to gravitational acceleration which is constant at, for all objects at a particular location. Uh, whether it's in space, whether it's on the surface of the Earth, the field strength, and therefore the acceleration are constant if you're in free fall. So here's a question. A spacecraft travels away from Earth with it, its engines shut down. At one instant, its speed is 4.2 kilometers per second. 200 seconds later, its speed is 3.8 kilometers per second. Find the average gravitational field strength at the location of this satellite. Well, it's moving initially with some speed u equals 4.2 kilometers per second, and then it ends up with some smaller speed, 3.8 kilometers per second. That's our final velocity. And the time is 200 seconds. Well, in our gravitational field strength equation, there's nothing given about speed. But we do know that little g is also a gravitational acceleration. So we can really just find our acceleration, delta v over delta t, 3.8 minus 4.2 kilometers per second minus 4.2 kilometers per second over 200 seconds. It's equal to 0 0.4 over 200, which is... 0 0.002 kilometers per second squared, or 2.0 meters per second squared, is equal to g. So we're quite high up. g is less than 9.8. Okay, from direct experiment and observation, we have measured that the radius of the moon is 1737 kilometers and objects dropped on the surface of the moon accelerate at 1.625 meters per second squared. Estimate the mass of the moon. Well, we don't know what object is dropped, but we do know the radius of the moon, 1737 kilometers, and we do know the acceleration due to gravity, g, on the moon, 1.625 meters per second squared. We want to find m, we can use our gravitational acceleration formula. G equals gm over r squared. And we're looking at the surface of the moon. So we're looking at our g value right at the surface of the moon. But we want to solve for r, so let's multiply both sides by r squared. Now we want to divide both sides by little g. Then we square root both sides. Wait, that's not right. Uh, we're actually solving for mass. So uh, let's go back to this step. We get r squared g equals big G m. And now we just divide both sides by big G. Divided by big G, divided by big G. m equals r squared g over big G. Plug in our numbers, r is 1737 times 10 to the 3 meters. That whole thing squared times little g, which is 1.625 meters per second squared, divided by big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. 
The mass of the moon then is approximately, well, let's plug into a calculator, 1737 times 10 to the 3 squared times 1.625 divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. About 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. Okay, in summary, gravitational fields are produced by masses and permeate all of space. They tell us about the gravitational force, both the direction and the magnitude of the gravitational force. And field line diagrams show us the field strength and direction. The definition of gravitational field strength is force per unit mass on a small test mass. We can also find the field strength produced by a mass, big M, little g equals big G, big M over R squared. And that little g, that gravitational field strength, is equal to the gravitational acceleration at that location. That's all. Bye.